What is the practical significance of this approval by the FDA for final approval of the vaccine? David, this is a very important step that I think will have an impact on vaccination in the United States uh, over time. Maybe not a big boost today, but if you look at what FDA did, this was applying all of its usual standards for approving a vaccine when you're not in a public health emergency. So very different from the current circumstance. That means they have longer term follow-up data. That means they've looked at things like how stable the vaccine remains on a shelf in the freezer over time. They've audited all this information. They've gone and done the inspections, gone through thousands and thousands of pages of data on each and every patient that was included in the study, put it all together and put out a comprehensive report. There's not much new here in terms of the actual evidence on safety and effectiveness. We know the vaccine's very effective. We have a very clear idea of the safety profile now, but for anyone who had doubts uh, about that could be addressed by looking at more complete data, it's definitely worth looking at this decision by FDA. It's, it's, it's a big, uh, big review process that was done uh, very comprehensively. So, so, Doctor, I want to draw a line under what you just said, because I must say I thought that maybe this was more of a formality. But in talking to Pfizer, first of all, they have a lot more patients that actually got treated uh, that were in this. But more important, what you just said, whereas the emergency use authorization was based on a fairly short period of time it's being used, now we have quite a few months of experience. So there's a lot more data that should give us a lot more reassurance. That's right. Now, the data that has been coming out over time is something that, because this is so important to Americans and really people around the world, the FDA has been looking very closely as it's come in. So that's why we know about these rare side effects, like the, the inflammation of the heart that's generally very rare, temporary, and resolves. Uh, we know that there aren't any long-term side effects that have shown up now in, in millions of patients who have received the vaccines, and we know that the vaccines are very the vaccine is very effective. Um, but what FDA has done is put all that together in a comprehensive review uh, and uh, bundle it up so that people can see all that data in one place, see how it all adds up. So the thought and perhaps hope is that people will be more reassured. What does it mean for Pfizer? What can they do with this vaccine today that they couldn't do yesterday? Well, there are several things that can happen. When a product is fully approved, it then is easier for doctors to prescribe it in the way that they think is appropriate for their patient. They don't have to follow the emergency authorization exactly. So there may be some increases in use for people who want to go ahead and get boosters. It's a little complicated because right now the vaccine is all being provided by the federal government under some of the specific terms that the Centers for Disease Control has outlined. But you might see more use among people people who just want to get a booster sooner. More important is about three in 10 people who haven't been vaccinated yet said in surveys that this finding by the FDA for a full approval would make a difference for them. Now, they may still be hesitant, but there's really very comprehensive information here around safety and effectiveness in millions of people in pregnant women. There's no uh, in for um, other young women, there's no evidence of any impacts on fertility and a lot of evidence showing just how beneficial the vaccine is. So it should make a difference for them. It will also make a difference, a difference for business, schools, maybe entertainment venues, state and local governments that will push ahead with requirements for vaccines in settings where lots of people are coming together and there's a risk of transmission without the vaccine. So explain this to me, doctor. Um, one might think, well, now they can start selling this and start making money off of it. But as I understand it, Pfizer has a longer term contract with the U.S. government, and at least for the time being, the U.S. government is still buying a lot of this vaccine that will make available for free. That's right. You know, Pfizer has a long term contract that it's still in the process of fulfilling for the U.S. government going forward. And for that matter, for governments really all over the world, David, this is a, a very popular vaccine, especially in higher income countries that have good storage systems for the ultra cold uh, temperatures that are required for maintaining the virus over time. Um, and it will probably in, in time lead to more direct purchases as well. But right now, uh, just about all of the purchasing is occurring through government agencies and, and multinational organizations. We are still in the midst of a, of a major pandemic. So, so, Doctor, also bring us up to speed on another aspect, which is booster shots for people who are fully vaccinated, because we heard some senior officials at HHS last week say that it's a good idea. At the same time, as I understand, there's, the CDC wants to take some more look at it. Are, are we fully approved to have those booster shots? 
Well, there is evidence on two fronts that's driving this interest in boosters sooner rather than later. One is the Delta variant, which is so much more contagious and shows some evidence of being able to break through the vaccines, not to cause serious cases very often, but, but mild cases, and that can make for more spread. Second thing is there is some evidence that the effectiveness of the mRNA vaccines is declining over time. It's a little bit hard to sort out, you know, how much is Delta, how much is uh, is time. And that's why the federal government on the one hand is waiting for some more data to come in. There are studies being done now, very large ones, of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine booster, so you can get a better handle on this question. On the other hand, uh, looking back it appears that for higher risk individuals, there may be a need for a booster sooner rather than later. Not for everybody, not for people who didn't get vaccinated till you know later on in the spring, uh, but that's why they're trying to both move this process forward and wait for some additional data over the next few weeks. So I expect this to get much more clarified uh, as we head into September, ahead of that September 20th, um, you know, eight month uh, uh, deadline that the government set. Doctor, some people have raised a question whether it is ethical for us to be giving a booster shot to people fully vaccinated in this country when we haven't gotten everybody vaccinated around the world. Uh, I raised a question with Larry Summers of, of Harvard last week, and he said, look, we need to do both. We should be able to do both and. Is that doable? Can we both give ourselves boosters and make sure the rest of the world gets vaccinated? It's absolutely doable, David. Uh, this year, there'll be more than 5 billion of these high quality vaccines produced between the mRNA vaccines, J&J, &J, I'm on the J&J &J board, uh, AstraZeneca, and that's way more than is needed to just vaccinate higher income countries. There is a big inequity right now in terms of who's getting the doses, uh, and we need to ramp up the availability. But we have enough vaccines to do this in the coming months while still providing boosters for Americans. The other challenge, David, is not just providing the doses of the high quality vaccines, but as we've seen in the United States, uh, you have to get those shots out around the country and into the arms of higher risk people who may have questions and hesitancy. So all those issues that we struggled with here this year, uh, those are even bigger challenges in many low and middle income countries that have never done uh, a big vaccination program for adults before. And I think there's not nearly enough attention to the fact that at some point soon, we're going to have more doses than we have the capacity to get shots into arms.